all my PCs have gone haywire and my Mac is still running perfectly with nothing wrong with it. I'm actually using it a lot. Might have to turn off the light because it's pretty But bright. they are. Some, and I bought that myself, so I mean. Well, let's get a photo first. It's just all about you know. I never used I anything, anything back, back, so I didn't. Right. Mean, right. You know, I never did either. Mm -hmm. uh, my husband did design and stuff, but I had never used a Mac, and I hated. It. I refused. I now have um, a computer, an iPad, and a phone. <laughs> They're just simple, and it's it's just a learning curve, mm -hmm. and, but it's a very simple one. So, so I've got to ask then. Yeah. When, when you're you, when you're writing contracts, you're writing out of your Mac, not out of your PC. Because yeah. a lot, yeah. I run, Perhaps. I run uh, no, VMware. VMware Fusion. Yeah, VMware Fusion. So I run Windows on my Mac, but the only thing I use Windows for on my Mac is um, Publisher because the Microsoft Office for Mac doesn't have Publisher. Mm -hmm. So Publisher and um, Outlook sometimes because Outlook for Mac doesn't let you send more than 11 megabyte files, so I have to go into Outlook on. So you have virtual machines, so you have to use Windows sometimes on your Mac, right? Sometimes, okay. yeah. But for most things, record. it's worth it. Uh, okay, so this is what our Dropbox looks like. Um, typically, so what happens is, um, I'll show you the CMAs, but once I do the CMA, I upload it, and it goes into the CMA folder. So every CMA that I've done for the past six months since we've done it, all in here, every single one of them. So if we ever need to go back for a client, and then if we list the property, it goes into their client folder, so it gets mm -hmm. out of there. But let's just um, get one. Also, and how long does it take you to see a main now? 15, 20 minutes. At first, 30 minutes, but it's just easier now. Um, we have our own sheet. It doesn't look like this anymore. It's way simpler. It just has the name. Right now, it only has the name, address, um, city, state, zip, and phone number and email. You guys created that yourself? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I don't have any of the bottom half anymore because it's all electronic. But uh, let's see. Uh, this is our sheet. So who, uh, our caller who sets the appointment, it's you know, the appointment date, the time, and then it was set by whoever called on it. So I, know, I can track who's getting paid for it. And then it's the same thing. It has the name phone number and everything. Um, he does his notes on the house, so I kind of have an idea if there's any upgrades, like maybe there's an attached garage that doesn't show on title. How many colors do you guys have? Just one. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then uh, I asked for a trio from title so that I have the legal description. So if we do list it, we have it already. And then title also gives me, it's really blurry, but um, is there any way to make it clear? Clear? Oh, I'm not the tech guy. Okay. Anybody else need that clear? Can we make that clear, more clear? That's like, I, th I mean, I think that's as good as it gets. Yeah. Okay, so anyways, uh, what I do is make sure that the owner's name right here, it matches what they put on the sheet. Um, I take the acreage, which is right there, and check bedrooms, bathrooms, square footage, and you're built in this area. And then the price that they say it's worth is right there. So that one says 314 So the title says that this home is worth 314 And then... This is just everything title gives you. And then there's legal description. So when he goes on an appointment, this is what he has. Yeah. I used to get comps from title, but it's not worth it anymore. So the way you saw, I just passed through the door. But I go to Redfin, and I pull up the address, and I print out what they have. Um, the only things I use from Redfin are right here. It's e-appraisal and Zillow. And there's um, medium, low, and high for each. I average each of them. And I'll show you on the sheet at the end um, what it is, but I average the low, medium, and high for all those. And then these are sold, so it's saying that the price sold, you don't care about listed, is um, like 287 Is it still on Zillow? Yeah. Wow. Or Redfin. Redfin. Same thing. Okay. But um, yeah, so I'll tell you what's been sold, what the price per square of this house should be is sold. Mm -hmm. And then you get realist. And I started doing just a one-line report, so there's going to be a lot of stuff extra. Realist will give you a number right here. It says 315, I think. And then it'll give you a range like 262 to 369. That's what they're saying the home is worth. And that's all you're looking for from Realist? Yeah, that's it. So, so real quick also, so are you printing everything out? Yeah. Handwriting everything and then scan it all into one PDF? That's what you're doing, right? Yes. Okay. It's a lot easier. I might start using Adobe and putting them in, but I still have to handwrite stuff, so it kind of just works.
Um, this is just more information on title. Uh, don't worry about these. These are comps from Realist that I don't use anymore. And then you pull um, a one-line CMA report. So what you do is you go in the MLS and you type in the address because half the time this listing has either been active, canceled, or sold before mm -hmm. or expired. You take that MLS number and then you do either point a quarter mile or half mile radius around it, active, pending, and sold. And then you kind of figure out what the price range is. By now you've already figured out that the price range is probably 287 to 319. So you probably go 380 to... Two, 250 to 380. You said quarter mile to half a mile? Yeah. Unless you, it's a specific property, like maybe acreage, you got to go mm -hmm. farther out. You just keep going until you get about 8 to 10 comps. Okay. No more than that, usually. Because then it's just too far out. Um, you'll get active, pending, and sold. And then I just, the check marks are meaning that this home was a three bedroom, probably, I think, one and a half bath or something. So I just checked all the three bedrooms. I checked all the same bathrooms. And all the same, roughly same square footage between within like three to four hundred square feet, and like um, this was not as much, but date and age and everything you'll see it. And then this one doesn't have, but usually I'll um, under like on sold. This is original list price, the list price that it sold at, and the actual sold price. So I'll circle this one, underline, underline, so that they can see when they're looking through it that even though it's listed at three ninety nine, it list it went down to three eighty and it sold for two ninety or something. Mm -hmm. So they can, the seller can see. And then this is a brief portrait of those properties. And yeah. sometimes I'll write in here, like I'll go through the pictures. It's a really specific property, like um, which one's updated, what has new carpet, like that kind of thing. And then the trend graphics. We only use this one now. Which is this one? Um, number of homes for sale versus sold versus pending. That one, and then Allen Pope. We don't print it out more, but we use Allen Pope. It just shows the market. Right. And then I just print out net sheets, but this is my scratch sheet. <laughs> so this is what I was getting to. Is uh, so my property um, on the caller sheet. They want three ninety seven for the property. That's what the seller wants for it. Um, it's that's all the information from title in the upper corner. Redfin. I was telling you the low, medium, and high averages, and then I do the averages of these two in the middle of each. And then the tax assessed value and the price per square foot sold. And then title had 314. Um, don't worry about the thing underneath, I don't do comps anymore. And then the real list was um, that top number and then the range underneath, and then your active penny and sold. And then I kind of just, the circles are the ones that are most comparable to the home and the most distinct price. Like if real list says 316, title says 314, the house should roughly be around 320. So you know, 335 is getting up there, but it's still comparable because of the sold being 372 and pennies being 355. What's, what's your guess the sold rate to pen list to list price? 98.9. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And then I do, um, based off that, I kept all the circles I add up and then divide by how many there are, and that gives me a medium. Mm -hmm. And so from there, depending on the property, I go about, you know, like that one's 349, so 39, 49, 59, or if it's a in the 600,000s, I go 25,000 increments because it's different price range. But usually it's anywhere from 10, 5 to 15,000 difference in the high, medium, low. And that's where the net sheets come from. So that's would you first be statement. comfortable with kind of, would you be comfortable emailing a folder to the group here so they could see an example of all the stuff that you put in? Um, or maybe even just a list of the things that you put in? What, what folder? Uh, for example, you've got this whole folder for this particular client for the listing, right? No, this is just CMA. This is not a listing. So, oh, this is just the CMA. Well, so, yeah. so this particular, all the, the details you've got on this particular CMA. Yeah, that, that's just our CMA folder. If you go into, I'll show you clients. Um, well, we won't do the buyer. It's not as easy. So this one's a. We'll do this one. So like this one, um, it's a dead deal. It was signed around and then they backed out. This is the newest one, Hagen to Smith. They have the listing agreement. Right. You can label them. I know what they are. Some of the ones in here. Uh, you know, the photos and then supplemental documents. You know, updated CMAs going here. And then, so Hagen to Smith, the actual agreement. Uh, mutual acceptance is on the end. Yeah. Love it. So there's their offer. 
I kind of just know what they are, but you can label them to get yourself in a system. But this is what they look like. Buyer, do this one. You know, they got the pre approval, so then all your pre approval letters in there. And then the purchase and sale agreement. So you keep your CMA yeah. completely separate um, from the client file? Or is it in the client file? No, it's in the client file. It's in their supplemental. Once, once, if, once she's listed it. All right, he's listed it. So if we go back to this, <laughs> let's go back to it. The seller. <clears throat> let's go back to the one we were in. So this one, if you go in supplemental documents, okay, it's there. all the CMAs are there that I did. And I can show you an updated CMA. It's just a one line report from the MLS. And so just one line report from the MLS. I go on everything, Redfin, Real Estate, but I just put the numbers on right the here. same page. Yeah, they don't need to have the full CMA. They can just get my numbers because they already know this wheel. Um, pending <coughs> four six. I don't know. I can't <coughs> read it, but yeah. And then what you can do also for updated CMAs is the price per square foot. This number right here. You take that number and multiply it by the square footage of that house. It'll give you kind of what they'd be relative to these houses. And then I get a suggested price. And it's not saying, it's kind of just like you need to reduce your price. You're overpriced. Mm -hmm. So, and how then Phil calls them. How often does that happen right now? So yeah. do you email it to them so, so they can see what Phil's talking about? I email them and CC Phil. Oh, okay. Yeah. But um, let's see. I'll show you some tracking sheets, I guess. So when you guys do... Um, your caller and Phil goes on the appointment. Mm -hmm. and then I'm assuming you set up a follow-up system. Yes. And top producer, and that's what you guys follow. Mm -hmm. So what happens is the um, caller sets calls sets the appointment, and then he puts it on the calendar, and then um, he'll just go, I do, then he sends me the CMA. So I'll do this, the sheet to do the CMA. I'll do the CMA. Um, I put the CMA in Dropbox, Phil goes in the appointment, CMA's in Dropbox for him. Um, caller calls the client back, calls the client back um, the next day after the appointment, says how did it go, was everything what you expected, how'd you like Phil, kind of get a feel for if they're gonna list or not, if they didn't already. And then they go on a, either a thank you letter only because you know they're just not interested or something when you know they're already listed with a discount broker or something. So you can't solicit them, so you just say thank you for your time, and then we just keep tracking them and call them back in a couple months. But the other one is they go on a 10-week program where we just follow up with them every week for 10 weeks, and if they don't list by 10 weeks, then we just discard them. They don't want us. <laughs> but How many listing appointments do you think he goes on mm -hmm. a year? In order to get 83 this year, he has to go on at least five a week. Yeah. And that, what we want to do is 10 mm -hmm. a week, at least. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And how, what days are Phil taking off now? Because I'm sure he's got not work Sundays. Sunday for sure. That's uh -huh. about it. Saturday, if he doesn't have anything, he has uh, home buyer classes that he does. So every other Saturday is full. Really? Yeah. Pretty much Sunday is our only day. We go to church and do everything. <laughs> but this is the extension log. So it shows all of our extension numbers on the 800 rider signs. So there's extension numbers, um, the text code, so I have them linked together. And then whenever I put one up, I put the seller name, the address, and then what I did. If it's been recorded, it did the text message and the photos. So you kind of just know what's done. And then So what's more important first, uh, Courtney, you know, I know, understand CMA is a big process of yeah. how to really get it and how to do it. Mm -hmm. Is it more important to set up your CMA process first or setting up systems first so you actually know what you're doing? Systems. Systems yeah. first. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Until you give up the power of the CMA to your assistant, your systems need to be in order. You need to know, I mean, you need to know what they're doing in the office every day. Okay. You know? It's a building trust thing. I worked in the office for a year straight, and I live two hours away. So, yeah, that's why I work from home now. <coughs> but uh, let's let's hold for just a second. Okay. So, 
The thing to understand with, with all of you guys, she's got some dialed-in systems. You've been, you've been, right, yeah. yeah, okay. So this is kind of the aspiration to go to. I don't want you to get overwhelmed with a lot of it. There's right. a lot I don't of think good you need to do all this. Right, no, I this is just yeah. like, I mean, I started with just taking over his email. That's it. Right. Yeah, when I started. Yeah. But I got a lot thrown at me because he had an assistant for a while and. I just got thrown into the mix. Like, here you go. This is what I've been doing for the past 20 years doing. So, go. Yeah, so no there has been a learning curve on that one. But, you know, this is just kind of what you guys can build your own systems. I mean, this right. is, I, I've tailored, most of the stuff is from his old, what he's been doing, but I've tailored it mm -hmm. over the past two years. But, you know, this is our daily backlog report, so anytime we need to know anything, it's not working. It's, it's not open, but all we do is we have, you know, the address, where it came from, if it was a referral, you know, past client, um, the lockbox number, the owner, the code to open the shackle, uh, list price, date listed, MLS number, expiration date, um, the buyer, you're on pending, that's why it is. So buyer, seller, if it's on the active side, it's only one or the other, because we haven't, but if it's on pending, then obviously you have a buyer and a seller. Um, the agent on the other side, the contact number, um, who the lender is, and who type title is, escrow, so and the closing date. So you guys say that you guys do that in Excel. Why not do that in uh, Top Producer? Top Producer. Does the Top Producer allow you to track your transactions? Yeah, I don't like I track them in there too, but not the same way. Why? Because it's not as easy? or Yeah. It's just, with this one, I can go and manipulate anything I want, whereas Top Producer, they pulled... I type in, so when we get a listing, I add, you click add listing mm -hmm. for the client, and then you input the MLS number and it pulls all the data, but it doesn't give you the customization of, um, I don't know, be, like putting, you can put the lockbox number, but I don't know the lockbox shackle code. I can't put that in there. So you can just customize everything you want. Yeah. I mean, Excel is way better. Mm -hmm. I still have everything top producer just because it links to the people's profiles, but I don't do much in there other than saying it's active, it's pending, or it closed, we got paid. Mm -hmm. That's it. I still have our own sheets. Because do you track everything what all the expenses are in Top Producer or not? Or um, the business expenses? No, Phil does all that. Okay. Yeah. So that's kind of what that is. And then and these are just, so I would. Before going into top, I start with an Excel spreadsheet. It's the easiest. You can change mm -hmm. it on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. You know, you can go in from anywhere and change it. Um, this is our year. That's like our closing schedule. But uh, this is what it'll look like once they're listed or sold. This is my year-end report. So, so far in January, you know, these are all buyers. So they go in the buyer column. I just put a one. Oh, well, let me, it won't let me edit it, but I just put a one. You just click enable editing. Yeah, enable at editing at the top. It didn't work. It, I already tried it. <laughs> but you just put a one if it's a listing or a sale, and it calculates at the bottom. And I have, if you can't take an Excel course, it's pretty. Do it. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty fun to work with Excel once yeah, you have all the useful, formulas. Yeah, definitely. And I basically just use some function. That's it. So it's pretty awesome. So did you take an Excel class at first yeah. to learn the stuff? Yeah. No, I took it in college. Oh, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Sorry. Would it be helpful to you guys if I was able to, and I don't know if I can yet, but if I can arrange an Excel class for yes, you guys, please. if you want that? I yeah. think I think Excel is something that's, yeah, mm -hmm. definitely the essential. One. We probably have other assistance things we'll probably like it too. Okay. Because yeah. Yeah. you first just need to learn like how to make stuff and like the sum function. Right. Just basic stuff. You don't need stuff. the, right, the yeah. macros and stuff. Right, yeah. and it's not fun. Nobody uses that anymore. Um, so anyway, we just track everything. Uh, you know, if it's a listing or a sale, once it actually sells, it'll be marked that way. The commission, the three percent, any credits that were out, how much we paid Saul, how much we paid Lorelei, what my bonus is, different structure, um, how much our caller gets, and if it's a short seller or short sale negotiate, negotiate how much he gets. And then at the end of the year, it will, it calculates along the way, but right. once we do have stuff in here, it'll tell me my average price, my average commission, my total sales. And this is the same format you've always used since last year? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It's just a really simple way I can go in, I can say what are our price, commission, and sale. Mm -hmm. is, is this something you'd be willing to share? Um, it doesn't have to be your numbers, but just a uh, template. The format, yeah. yeah. I don't care. 
because that'll be, you know, I mean, that's yeah. for a lot of people, yeah. you know, you kind of, at least you have a baseline of where you're at. Mm -hmm. yeah. Kaha, can you do me a favor? Let's make a list of things that maybe if, if, or if you could send me an email of some of these items, I can get it out to you. Would you, would you just keep a list sure. for us, a running list, and then mm -hmm. we can make sure? Um, go write down backlog report. Backlog report? Yeah. It's all done. Okay. what it is. And then... Could you share a, a file of the CMA one? Uh, what's in the, you know, how you structure, you know, from beginning to end, uh, just a single file? Of a CMA? Yeah. Because it's, all, it's, you know... That's the hardest part for me, when, you know, because I always go to like marketing, and you know, I go to a lot of CMA classes, but yeah. I've always been a buyer's agent for a very long time. So where I find myself struggling is how to get to the right CMA or how to do a CMA and get to the right price, because mm -hmm. now I want to change my business model to way more listings than buyers. Mm -hmm. but, um, but, um, the, but the way you guys do buyers is pretty damn efficient, though. <laughs> yeah, you don't give them, they're either ready or they're not. You don't right. mess around. <laughs> right. But uh, let me talk to Phil about the CMA. It's not that I can't share. It's just that uh, no, all of these are mostly old, so they're not everything. But well, I saw your old one had like 30-something pages, and your new one had one page. Yeah. They used to be all printed. In so now you just do one page, right? No, that's no. an updated CMA. That's an updated CMA. So once oh, they're already you. listed. Okay, oh, yeah. once they're already if you, listed. The easiest thing is um, just title, um, trio, Redfin. Realist and MLS. That's all they are. Okay. That's all it is. So you just go and you print them all out. Um, and then try the numbers and then. Yeah, and you can make up your own sheet. I mean, that's all it is. The term graphics right. now, both, it's all online now, so we right. don't even put them in. But that's all it is. Title, um, to get that number, how much title thinks your assessed value is. And then Redfin tells you the Zillow and e appraisal, those numbers. And uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, Realist gives you that ABM number, yep. and then MLS gives you the real data. I don't really need a real list, and, and then all I use is pretty much mm -hmm. the MLS. This. So when you go to real the, when you go to real list, um, once you get title, you can type in the tax ID number or the address, and then just do the quick report. And it'll just give you one to one and a half page report, and all you need is the ABM number. Okay. Yeah. That's okay. pretty much what we did this morning, right, guys? Except yep. for you did, you're doing. Um, um, on Redfin, we just did Zillow this morning, mm -hmm. but you did Redfin. It has both, so I would yeah. strongly do that. Been on I've, I've been on Zillow, but I've never actually looked into it for using it, but if it works and you think it's better. Well, the reason we were getting on yeah. is because so many uh, just normal buyers out there yeah. and sellers out there, that's where they go. Yeah, so Zillow if you want to replace business. red film silk, go ahead. Yeah. It's just, yeah. it's all about taking an average of four sources to find a common ground. And obviously MLS trumps everything because of the sold data. Mm -hmm. so, but it helps you see, you know, even though the sold data may be low, the house might be worth more. So, yeah. Can we see an example of a flyer mm -hmm. that you've done? Has it been worth it having a caller, like, you know, for Phil to get to his five listing apartments? Because, I mean, it's yes. FISBO and... Mm-hmm. I see, but he did his own calling for... Ever. 20 years. Yeah. Yeah. How long have you had a dialer now? Mm, two years. We've been in that of different ones. We're back to our first guy. Oh, okay. Um, do you outsource it or do you have it works on your team? No, nope, he works on our team. Mm -hmm. And is it called expired too or just maybe just physicals? Just physicals right now. Um, do you guys know what we were talking about just now? Do you know what a dialer is? Some people call it caller or dialer. What do you call it? Dialer or caller? Telemarketer. Telemarketer. Caller. Call, yeah. call. Someone that does the calling, right? Yeah. yeah. So it just sets up appointments, talks to people, sets them up. What's the percentage of uh, uh, um, database deals out of the 61? Um, I think we had... Oh, I did, you know what? I don't 19. have publisher on there, babe. I'm sorry. Oh. I don't have my product here. We could put it on there. I've got it on there. I just never pulled it up. Um, yeah. Did you have um, one in a PDF? Yeah, I, I'm trying to think of which one it was. I did move on to a PDF the other day. There you go. Neither one of them was. Yeah. I don't usually convert it just because I sent it. I sent it to the sign company in publisher because in case there's a discrepancy on this uh, IVR number, they can just change it and then tell me what they changed it to, and I'll go back and do everything again. Okay. Don't laugh at this one. It's a short sale, so I didn't care what I wrote. So <laughs> <laughs> it's a cottage style cutie. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to make this. Oops. <laughs> 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And you guys, uh, do you always include a QR code? Yes, the QR code is actually through the texting. Um, so our 800 number has a text number also on it, which is right here. Mm -hmm. Plus, when you go on the back end, they give you a QR code that matches up with all of where it takes all of these. Mm -hmm. So it takes you the same thing. But just MLS number, description, um, Whoever you want to call, we have an agent up north that I'm sending stuff to, their email, website, and a few photos of the house. Address. Do you ever edit the photos? Like if they're too dark or... Yeah, these are kind of edited. It was, it's already sold, so it's kind of just put right, on right, fire yeah. put in the box, you know? <laughs> and they're in black and white anyways. We don't do color. Oh, really? Yeah, so honestly... You can't oh, okay. tell. Okay, so all your flyers are in black and white? Mm -hmm. Okay. Have you ever just done in the flyer box just the QR code? Has it has available? Uh, no, because I. There will be varying opinions, but I don't believe people use QR codes. I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. I think QR codes are I yesterday think already. I think they're yesterday, and I, I only put them on there as a third source when somebody actually picks up the flyer. And there's an eco flyer too, where they just laminate it and put it on the post. Mm -hmm. So. I don't know. I think they're a waste of time. Yeah. I'd rather text, but that's just because that's my generation. I'd rather right. text. Well, and I would more listen to you than listen to my generation, so I think that's a good <laughs> Yeah, but you know, some people want to call and talk to somebody or so hear my voice. How do, you guys, how do you guys track you, you, your buyer, um, you know, it goes right to your buyer mm -hmm. agent versus to you guys and to, then to your buyer agent? And, that or resystemizing. <laughs> okay, yeah, because you can't really track that. No, well, it's very difficult. Um, so we're not getting much of it. We're going to be getting another buyer's agent, so it's going to be even more difficult. What we're going to do is just make all the calls go to our caller, and then he transfers, transfers them. So he is the gatekeeper okay. and knows where everything is going. Okay. Yeah. Anything else you guys want to see on our files? Good. Um, <laughs> it's probably a lot to see. There's a lot. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a good amount. But uh, so you, you like me? Obviously, there's no paperwork to deal with. It's nice having everything digital. If you need to print something out, you can just go yeah. to it, and you know. <laughs> and if he needs it, you don't need to give it to him. He can just access Dropbox or whatnot, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you guys. You know, um, hearing as an assistant, where, where do you guys feel blocked, or where do you guys feel like, okay, well, you know, what's first in your opinion? To implement because we're slowly, you know, when I met with you, mm -hmm. we've done a lot with you. We've talked about just so you know, yeah, we've already implemented quite a, a bit, and mm -hmm. obviously, it's always a work in progress. Mm -hmm. But, um, I would say the very first thing for us is systems, 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 systems. systems yeah. You just need to, if you're, it's different with Phil and I because I, his email, Phil Art General Scott, is me, so. Anybody who wants to talk to him has to go through me, unless they call his phone directly. Including me. Yeah. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I sift through what he needs to worry about. So, you know, say an inspection response comes in, I forward that to him because he needs to t talk to the seller about what needs to be done. I don't do that. That's not, he's the agent. There's some things that you're the agent. Right. <laughs> I'm not getting paid to do that. So, um, like an inspection response, I'll forward on to him and then I'll write it on my list. Um, I still do a lot of hand notes, I have note sheets. So my checklists are on paper. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I just write down whose inspection response I need, and I just ask them the next day, did you get it done? So you don't have two separate emails. You specifically handle his John Scott email, mm -hmm. and then you forward to some outside email? His home email, His yeah. home email? Okay. Very, nobody really has that one. Or I send him, so say there was a customer that needed an answer, like this past week, and they needed some answer, and I had no clue what they were talking about because it's his client. So I emailed it to him, he emailed his response back, and then I copied and sent it. Okay. Yeah. In, so in that case, I take out my signature because in the signature it says Courtney Hahn. In um, that case, I take it out and put Phil. <laughs> but half the time, they don't realize it's me. Okay. So. Yeah, they don't have to know. They don't have to know. They don't have to know. Or they're not smart enough to read the signature, and then it's their own fault. Well, I think for you. <laughs> I don't even know if Sarah's still going to do it. You're going to be all over Quasi's email. So that seems a very similar system. Mm -hmm. But John really does his, right? Oh, or do yeah. you just... I have access, but... But he's, he's, he's all about his. Yeah. The only yeah. reason why we did it is because um, 
the only thing that Phil focuses on is being in the field. Mm -hmm. So for him to worry about anything in the office or, you know, Sally wants a CMA. Why is he doesn't even know that? Yeah. I just tell him that I'm doing it for her. Or, you know, a past client, like um, this lady named Marcy, she emailed in saying I'd like to know what my home's worth and if I could uh, list it next week. And I said, okay. And I emailed her back saying, I'll let me know what day works. I'll do the CMA. And then I tell Phil, you have an appointment next week. I don't know when, but you're going to. <laughs> but speaking of that, you know, when you guys, so sharing calendars and what's the gain or the advantage, disadvantage, because, you know, we talked about, you guys talk about sharing calendars. Mm -hmm. um, well, I still have my own email. I still have Corey H. at John L. Scott, but very rarely people email me there. Like only payroll emails me <laughs> for my time card, but that's about it. Um, or if I have my own clients, they email me there. But everything goes out as the Roderick Group, which is what we are, or as Phil. And the calendar, we have Phil's calendar through his General Scott, and then we have my calendar. That's why I have my own email still, mm -hmm. is through my calendar. So um, we share the calendar. Everything goes on his calendar for all of his appointments, everything. Or if we have a class together, it goes on both of them. But um, he sees my calendar, so if I'm not answering my phone, he can see that I'm at the gym <laughs> or I'm somewhere else. That's the reason why he has my calendar. How are, so I, John, I, John's looked in this, and it's, apparently there's some issue like, being able for me to see his calendar and vice versa. I, I, Can you change the permissions in Outlook? <laughs> see, that's what they've looked into, and essentially what John was told is it's too big of a hassle. It's not. So. That's why you gotta go yeah. with Gmail. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, we just figure it out. Just like, <laughs> if you guys can, if you guys know Gmail, I highly suggest using it. I am not very techy. I'm I can design, but tech-wise, I cannot figure it out. It's way too much for me. That's why I don't use it. But if you can figure it out, I suggest using it. All right, Kaha, you're gonna teach everybody then. So we'll, we'll help you there. What? We figure it out. Yep. What? We 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 left Outlook completely. We're actually gonna have Kaha come in and teach a class on. Um, on Gmail. Google, on Gmail and Google for, I'll so so we it. really know how to do it. So we can invite yeah, just pretty, my home use. <laughs> pretty much, you know, just show. I, I just know how to reply. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I mean, yeah, my plan is, you know, if I do that, just to pretty much show how we do things, you know, how we structure exactly. our, you know. I think I still use Outlook um, because you can do everything I do in Google, like Google Docs, everything. But because I have my systems, I mean, it's or really hard to switch in. them up. Yeah. So that's why I keep everything separate. Mm -hmm. It's Outlook, Dropbox, but Google, you can, it's all synced. By mm -hmm. the way, guys, everything we've talked about here, every single solitary program, when we go paperless, it's all already inside that program. Nice. Everything. Yeah. The CMA information, it, it, it all has IDX going to it. You can get outside, all your email will be stored within it. You can do all of that, uh -huh. your whole flow through. You don't know about this yet. Mm -mm. <laughs> so and, so shh, no one else in the room, no one can know. <laughs> so we've got coming up a full, fully integrated paperless system that we're going to be introducing. It's one of the big things we've been talking about doing this year. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you exactly. Um, I haven't committed it yet to which one, but there's two that we're looking at that are okay. really robust. Um, and I'm hoping to do it before the summer, but I've got a much earlier goal, but before the summer. But you'll be able to pretty much put in all your systems in one place. So it's like... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nice. What are the um, companies? Skyslope and Easy Coordinator. Skyslope is the biggest bad boy though. They've got a new version coming out that just makes me drool. <laughs> so, but it'll be fun. We'll, we'll probably beta it first though. Yeah. So that might be coming to you. <laughs> I'll try it. Okay. I have a question about, I keep hearing about paperless, paperless. Um, are we still supposed to uh, keep hard copies of the real estate files? If it has a physical signature on it, yes. And here's how we do that. Well, first of all, if you've got the original, yes, you should always keep the original because that's going to come on it. A lot of stuff, got, I, I don't know if you, about you guys, but 90% of my stuff is all authenticized these days. It's actually going backwards now. A lot of banks aren't accepting mm -hmm. yeah. And by the way, that's federally illegal. Just letting everybody know. Against the law. Yeah, I, don't, I just don't understand. You know, at first they they're okay with it, and then they change their mind, or what's yeah. the complication? We've had, uh, last month at closing, we've had to have the buyers or sellers come back and what's sign it? physical signatures right next to it. Yep. Now the housing for all of our docs um, actually is at our corporate office. That's why you turn in those those lists. Yep. Having said that, when we go paperless, those will go away. So if you've got physical docs, yeah, you're going to keep files, just like we learned about yesterday. Mm -hmm. Those files will be, you'll, you'll, you'll keep copies of those. If you have signatures on them, right? Otherwise, don't. 
That's why when we get the listing or the purchase and sale, I just email straight to Lorelai because she takes care of it and sends it wherever it needs to. Yeah. 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 I don't send anything to corporate. I don't turn anything in. I turn it into Lorelai. But when we're, we're talking, so you'll be responsible for that, but everything that you'll scan up, and it can go straight from AuthentiSign into our paperless system, and then it'll come through me. So anything like that, if you don't have it, then you'll simply scan it. Like if you have a, if a wet signature, it'll be scanned and then put into our system. Um, and then it's just there, and you've got all your little workflow checklist that, 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 that's in there. And Lorelai's going to love it. Oh, she's um. going to do like twice as much. Torch will be like me and be like, oh. She will too. Yeah. She knows. She's excited about it. She's, she's the first beta, so. <laughs> She's yeah. tear it up with me at first. So. Um, they talked about what's important for you talking knowing the title rep and loan officer and the having a lot of interaction with them. Nope. So yeah, probably next I time. only know so. the lender because he does classes with them. I don't even, because we have two main lenders that we work with. And so I don't, I've met them once, but I just email. It's like, where's the pre approval? I'm blunt, but does <laughs> still have a relationship. I need stuff. Does still have a relationship with him? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, he does. So um, the lenders, yeah, it's you don't need to know them, but you need to be able to email them and get stuff from them. Mm -hmm. um, they need to be able to update you, but the lender and then title is just customer. We use Old Republic because they're very quick. Um, customer service department, they all know me, but I don't know them. <laughs> so but they see an email. They from see my like, name oh, all the time. Good. So. Um, and there's like three ladies that work up there. But so I kind of know them. And then escrow, we have one closer that we use if it's our choice. That's it. Mm -hmm. and you've got a good relationship with that person. Yeah. Probably by email, but it, but it's, there's a relationship there. Oh, yeah. And so technically, Lorelai knows everyone. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. And she does. She's got amazing I only know them through email, but she is the one who talks to them. Yeah. So if you don't have a Lorelai, then you should know them very well because <laughs> they'll be your best friend in closing. Exactly. How about inspectors? Oh, yeah. We do. The inspector that we have, um, Dave J. Gosh, I don't know if you've heard of him. The best. And he's really fun to be on an inspection with. It's like four hours long. So he did mine for our house. Good inspection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's reasonably priced and he's always there. Yep. Okay. Yeah. I'm sure there's going to be a lot more questions afterwards. You know, after <laughs> they start thinking about it. You guys can email me. What's your email? You're probably better off texting her. Uh, probably not on